Hi folks, it's Matt Bow with Matthew Bow Design Build, and we are back on site at our Net Zero project here in Leesburg, Virginia. Today we're going to talk about open cell foam and the application here on this project, which is in the roof system. You can see over my head um, that the foam has been installed. Open cell foam is a wonderful insulator. Um, and even more importantly, and I've spoken about it in a few previous videos, is that it is an air barrier. So one of our key goals in this house has been to make this house very, very tight, to really reduce air leakage. So as I discussed on our previous uh, video with regards to the dense pack cellulose you see in the wall system, which also is quite a good air barrier, um, the cellulose is a wonderful insulator and a complete air, air barrier. So this house is really, really getting tight. We're going to talk about the uh, air tightness of this house in the next video when we visit the blower door and blower duct testing that we did on this home to measure air leakage. But for now, it's about the insulation. So uh, one of the things that's a little bit out of the ordinary with regards to this is that we have insulated the roof system. And that differs from the ceiling system that you would typically see insulated between your uppermost floor and your attic. Uh, and we all know if we've gone up in our attic in the summertime, it's just unbearably hot. As a matter of fact, sometimes it can reach over 130 degrees. And of course, in the winter, it's just the opposite. It's very, very, very cold. And so that in these uh, seasonal changes, your uh, uppermost level is generally doing battle with that. And oftentimes you'll find in a, uh, the second story of the home is uh, quite often not as comfortable as the first story. A lot of that has to do with HVAC and ductwork design, but a lot of it also to do with the fact um, of uh, insulating that ceiling system and, and it doing battle with the just uh, oppressive environment that generally exists up in an attic. So um, to combat that, we have moved the insulation envelope to the roof system. And that way we do, uh, we're much more effective at keeping the outdoor environment outside. And uh, your attic now in this home will be considered somewhat of a conditioned space. So what I would expect is that no matter the season um, or no matter the uh, temperature extremes outside, I would expect that the attic in this home will range somewhere between 10 and maybe not even quite 15, but probably 10 or 12 degrees difference from the main conditioned living area. The great benefit of that also is that we happen to be running duct work. Oftentimes you can use that area to install uh, your some HVAC equipment. We happen not to be doing that on this project, but we are running duct work through that attic. So you can imagine the benefits of running that duct work through a conditioned space as opposed to running it you know, through a, a, an area that's 130 degrees in the uh, summertime and you're trying to run cool, cold air through ducts to deliver it to different parts of your house. So we have that great benefit as well. So we're going to stop here for a moment and take a look at some video of that insulation being installed. One thing to take note, watch when it goes on. It actually goes on in quite a thin layer, almost like a paint. But if you watch it, you can see how it foams up. And uh, at that point, it's creating all of the air bubbles. So this product, as it sets up, you know, the reaction uh, creates all of these uh, air bubbles. And the air bubbles is where you get your insulating um, uh, properties from, from this product. So let's take a look.
So as you can see, it's a bit of a messy process and um, it really requires the skill of a good installer. They have to know that product and know the degree to which it's going to expand. But one of the things you'll note is that everything around it gets encased. So this is where we get the air sealing properties. It expands tight from framing member to framing member. It expands in, uh, around any uh, plumbing vents we have going through the roof. It expands around any uh, openings going through the sidewall for bath fan exhausts or dryer exhausts. And it just seals everything. And this is how we get um, this house to be so airtight is using products like this. Another benefit of it is that it really increases the rigidity of your roof. When that product expands uh, from framing member to framing member to framing member, it really locks everything in. So the um, what we're expecting now, now that we have the insulation done, is we're going to do blower door and blower duct tests. And what that means is we're going to, we're going to test how airtight this house is. Um, we're going to create a negative pressure in this house, meaning we're going to be sucking air out of it. And we're going to go through the house with a smoke pen around all the windows and doors and other potential areas of leak. And we're going to see if air is coming into this home. If it is, we're going to point it up before we do um, the uh, before we install the drywall. We'll do the same thing with our duct system. Um, we'll create a negative pressure and we'll look to see if that duct system is leaking. And if so, we'll we'll address any of those leaks. All of these measures again. Uh, going towards our goal of air tightness and we're expecting some pretty good scores on this so we hope you'll come back in a, to the next video where uh, where we will uh, visit that process and look at the results we get but until then this is Matt Bow with Matthew Bow Design Build um, on our Leesburg Virginia net zero project have a great day thanks